It's been reported that GPUs are available at MSRP or below, but is this really the case? What are the prices and are any of these GPUs this generation worth buying? Let's get into it. Back in May, I showed how the GPU drought was over and that you could buy any GPU. And this month, we have seen even more models become available. But what about the prices? Let's start with NVIDIA. If we go over the Newegg and we just look at what is in stock and sold by Newegg, not any of the third-party scalpers, and also make sure that we're only looking at new GPUs, you can see that the 5090, you have 11 models available, and they go anywhere from 2759 all the way up to 3359 for the Astral. So you can see that there is plenty of 5090s available. However, they are still way above the 1999 that Jensen introduced back in January at CES. I can tell you that the $3,000 models have been kind of on shelves for the last month. I would expect that this Asus Tough at $2,759 will probably be gone pretty quickly. Let's move on to the 5080. Now the 5080, we see 13 models available and they go anywhere from 1409 all the way up to about 1850. That's quite a range and it's actually similar to what we saw last month. So not a lot of price movement with the 5080 series this month. Keep in mind at 1409, you're talking about a 40% increase over the MSRP of 999. Moving on to the 5070 Ti, which is the baby brother of the 5080. And you can see that there is one model at 869 and the highest end goes all the way up to 1079. And the rest of the models are right in between that $900 to 1000. That seems to be the targeted range for the 5070 Ti between 900 and 1000 dollars, which is way above the 749 that Jensen talked about with his fake MSRP back in January. But I have to say, if you can get one, even in the low $800 range, you're doing pretty good this generation. Let's move on to the 5070. The 5070 has the most number of models available. You can see that there are 19 available. And the 5070s start anywhere from $599, and they go all the way up to $769. Now, this is supposed to be an MSRP of 549. So this is another GPU that has been above MSRP since launch. And I can say the one change I have seen over the past month, there used to be a pretty even split of the number of GPUs below $700 and the number of GPUs above $700. And you can see now that of these 19, we have eight of them that are above $700. And then we have another 11 of them below $700. So there is a little bit of a shift downwards in the prices of the 5070, a small positive sign. Moving on to the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte version. This is supposed to have an MSRP of 429 and we see 449 as the low end price at Newegg and they go all the way up to 599. Wow. This GPU is the most promising if you can get it at MSRP of 429. Let's move on to the next one, which is the eight gigabyte version. We can see there are two models available at 379. And then there's a couple at 389. And now it quickly moves up into the low $400 range. This is a GPU that according to a lot of the reviews that nobody should buy. And these GPUs have been available at MSRP ever since the launch of the 9060 XT. Now let's move on to the 5060. And you can see the 5060 has 16 GPUs available. And these GPUs go anywhere from 299, which is the MSRP, all the way up to 409. Again, the Asus Tough. Again, this is an eight gigabyte GPU, and this is another GPU that, according to the narrative, nobody should be buying this GPU. And it looks like it's working because I don't see a lot of these being in the top selling list for sure. When I look at these GPUs, there's really only one that semi interests me, and that would be this gigabyte low profile, and that would be for like a small form factor. But you know what? Not everybody's interested in a small form factor. But if you are, this is pretty much the most powerful GPU you're going to get this generation. Now, there's been a lot of controversy regarding 8 gigabyte GPUs and is NVIDIA lying about their capabilities? With the 40 series generation, it was pretty clear. 
if we go over to the NVIDIA's website, we look up the performance graph for the 40 series. When you look at a 4090, it is considered a 4K gaming GPU and you see the performance charts done for 4K. And you see the same thing for the 4080 Super and the 4080 before it, they were essentially 4K GPUs. When you get to the 4070 Ti Super though, we now drop down to a 1440p resolution. You go down to the 4070 Super and even the 4070, you're again gonna see 1440p. When you get to the 60 series, which includes the 4060 Ti, 1080p. It is comparing this at 1080p. And this is actually using a 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte model. There's no mention of the 16 gigabyte model on the webpage. And if you go down to the 4060, again, 1080p. That's how they advertised it. If you wanted to do 4K gaming, it was 4080 and higher. If you wanted 1440p gaming, it was one of the 4070 or 4070 Ti. And if you want 1080p gaming, it was the 4060 family, either the 4060 or 4060 Ti. But if we go to the 50 series generation this year, you're gonna find the 5090, again, 4K, 5080, 4K, 5070 Ti, 1440p, 5070, 1440p. This is the big difference this year. The 5060 Ti is being sold as a 1440p GPU. But these performance figures only target the 5060 Ti with 16 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes. So what about the 8 gigabyte? There is no mention of the 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte. And this is the deceptive part this generation for that GPU. Now, if we move on to the 5060, we would expect it to be at 1080p and it is. So this is something that I would expect the 5060 and 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte versions to be 1080p like GPUs. But again, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this. We'll talk about more of that later. That's it for the RTX series. What about AMD? Have the prices of AMD GPUs been coming down? If we go over to Newegg and look up the prices for the 9070 XT 16 gigabytes, you have the ASRock Steel Legend for 700. You have a Gigabyte Gaming at 729 and the Sapphire Pulse at 750. The rest of the models are $800 and above. And that's an improvement over last month where pretty much all the GPUs that were available were $800 and above. And I have to say that this 699, and I talked about this before, that 699 was AMD's original MSRP price for the 9070 XT. And one of the reasons I come to that conclusion is AMD had a media briefing before the launch and they shared this slide and video cards got a copy of it. And one of the things that they said, they want to focus on what gamers want. They wanted more accessible. And they said 85% of the gamers buy GPUs less than $700. Why would you come up with a data point like that unless you wanted to sell your GPU for $699? Again, AMD came up with a fake MSRP of $599. We have not seen that price since launch day which makes the allegations or makes the rumors of the rebates that much more true. I even covered it January 12th, right after the CES announcement. And I covered a couple scenarios where I talked about AMD pricing the 9070 XT in the 650 to 699 region, simply because that's where the 7900 XT left off at the end of its life in pricing. So this would pick up where it left off and also they would be expecting NVIDIA to be greedy with the 5070 Ti being something more like 849 and above. The reality is that's what we're seeing today, but that's not what AMD thought was going to be true back then. So they delayed their launch so they could reconsider how they're going to price against NVIDIA's fake MSRPs. Moving on, we have the 9070 non-XT, and you can see that they actually have a 599 model available at Newegg, $50 above the 549 MSRP. Then you have one at 669 and then 769. That's quite a price spread. But it is better than what I've seen in the past several months where a lot of them were about $700 and above. Moving on to the 9060 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and you can see there are no MSRP models available. 
at Newegg, if you didn't get one launch day and there was maybe one or two drops since then, which basically came in and sold out quickly, there you got 369, 379, or 389 for their GPUs. Again, not MSRP. But if you do want MSRP, and what I see people reporting that, oh, AMD has MSRP cards available, the 9060 XT, get them at MSRP all day long. Yeah, they have those available, but they are the eight gigabyte models. These are the eight gigabyte models. There's four of them at MSRP. These are the eight gigabyte models that nobody should be buying. And they go from 299 all the way up to 379 for the Asus Prime version. These models clearly are not selling. Nobody's buying them. So should anybody buy these GPUs? Steve at Hardware Box has been leading the charge and the crusade against eight gigabyte GPUs in 2025. 16 gigabytes good, eight gigabytes bad. But it doesn't really talk about price. And I think that's the biggest thing that I have. You can say that eight gigabytes is unacceptable, Linus. And you can say that eight gigabytes is bad. However, let me ask you this. If you have eight gigabyte models, and then all of a sudden you see an eight gigabyte model like this ASRock Challenger, 299, but now I can get one open box for 239? That doesn't sound like such a bad price. And oh, by the way, you can get an additional 5% discount to take it down to 227. What GPU can you buy for $227 that is practically brand new? It's just open box. And yes, it does have eight gigabytes of VRAM, but you know what? If you're trying to build a budget PC for about $600, am I supposed to then say, nope, I'm not gonna spend 227. I gotta get a 16 gigabyte version. And that 16 gigabyte version of the Steel Legend is 390. That is $150 plus more. That's a pretty steep price to pay for a budget system at $600. So again, I'm not rolling out eight gigabytes just yet. I'm actually gonna get eight gigabyte models to test them myself. So in conclusion, what can we say? MSRP models are back, and those are only for the eight gigabyte models. And according to the mainstream narrative, you shouldn't buy them anyways. Problem is, now that the launch season is over, the prices of the 16 gigabyte 60 series of GPUs are drifting above MSRP. If you're a gamer, I would not look beyond the 5070 Ti or 9070 XT. The 5080 and 5090 have no competition, and they're really priced for professionals and corporations. But if you're just a gamer, you're paying a hefty premium. My advice is that if you can get within 10% of MSRP, then I think you're doing pretty good this generation. If you like this kind of analysis, like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see how these 8 gigabyte models perform, and are they truly dead, or if they're actually going to be used in a budget build, can an 8 gigabyte GPU still 1080p game in 2025? Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.